So hi everyone, welcome to the LGPC and SGPC annual responsible procurement event. I'm Marisol Bernal, the responsible procurement lead at LGPC. And I'm with Rob Johnson, for a head of procurement services at, LGP, at SGPC. Um, today, the event is organized by LGPC and SGPC, but it's open to all UK UPC members. So welcome everyone. Um, we're gonna have three different webinars. Uh, you can pick and choose which webinar you wish to attend. There are separate links uh, that are attached to the agenda that uh, we sent yesterday. Um, so for everyone, the video and audio will be disabled for all participants and uh, you can use the Q&A function um, to ask any questions. And at the end of the both presentation, we're gonna uh, go for a Q&A. Uh, Rob and I, we're gonna uh, help with that. Um, so we're gonna start our first webinar with an overview of the higher education terms uh, and social value in practice. And uh, welcome to our speakers, Nathan Good, Chief Strategy Officer at the Social Value Portal, and uh, Bindi Sandu, Deputy Director at LUPC. So I'll give the floor to you guys. I think um, Nathan is starting first. I'm gonna just uh, stop my video and welcome everyone. Okay, thanks very much, Marisol. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, I will just uh, do that thing of sharing the screen, and hopefully that will um, that will work. So, and sure enough, it doesn't. Hang on, let's have a look. Okay, cool. Good. So hopefully everybody can see that and. Um, uh, I will I will just dive in then. So thank you, thank you very much for inviting me um, to this session this morning. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be talking to you and to um, to be re-engaging with 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 the higher education sector um, after a little break. Um, I have to say, and I'll, I'll kind of come on to that in a moment. Um, so if I just introduce myself, I'm Nathan Good. I'm the Chief Strategy Officer at the Social Value Portal. Um, and I'm responsible for all of the work we do around Tom's development, um, also more broadly social value measurement, um, and all the data that we collect around use from our customers and more widely that feeds into building the picture and telling the story of social value. So this morning I'm going to talk a little bit about the TOMS and the Social Value Portal just by way of introduction context, then um, move on to the higher education TOMS um, and what it is, where it fits into the TOMS system, if you like, um, a little bit of background on how the HE TOMS has come to be. Um, then I'll move on to some updates around um, where the national TOMS um, and the TOMS system, if you like, is, is going more generally, some of the new content that we've brought forward and really just kind of end with an open question about uh, the next steps for, for the HE TOMS in the sector. And I'm looking forward to the other presentation and the conversation, really keen to get feedback, comments, ideas, um, suggestions about uh, how, to, uh, how to take this forward within the higher education sector. So um, the social value portal is, um, we think, kind of the, the, the now the leading um, uh, social value measurement uh, management and reporting business in, in the UK. Um, we are scaling up rapidly. So we've got um, over the last two, three, four years, um, we've built up um, our user base um, we have over three and a half thousand, nearly three and a half thousand registered suppliers using the portal. So those are uh, companies that are um, uh, delivering contracts for, um, for, for procuring authorities um, and using the portal to report on the social value targets um, that they set during the tender process and then coming back to provide that supporting information to show that uh, in contract management that's actually being delivered. Um, we've also got many organizations using us to, to, to measure their own social value outside of procurement and overall um, around about seven and a half thousand projects um, on the portal. Um, so we're beginning to build 
quite a good picture of what's going on in terms of social value and starting to think about how to to move it on and and what good looks like and and so on um so um the toms is is the kind of standard social value measurement system that sits behind that and i'll, I'll talk a bit more about that in a second um so it, it is a it, it's a kind of almost like a collection of frameworks i guess is one way of looking at it and uh, i spend a lot of time trying to draw pictures that explain where the different kind of toms frameworks fit together but uh, i'll come on to my latest version in a moment i'm still not happy with it but um it's it's very much an evolving picture um but broadly we've got um roughly a bank of over 300 social value measurement measures um we invest a lot of time and development into um, building those measures up and working out what the underlying rationale for those measures is, uh, finding the data sources to um, monetize um, the, the measures and provide valuations on that so that you can quantify the social value delivered in a way that's robust and, and auditable. Um, it's very much a kind of action-based um, framework in the sense that um, it's there to help organizations make a difference and, and to drive change. Um, so it necessarily has to be reasonably intuitive um, and, and sort of fairly simple to use. And we spend a lot of our time trying to make it simpler. Um, it, it's one of those things where, you know, maybe there's quite a lot of complexities. You start to build up the ideas and build up the framework, um, and then you need to work hard to, to make it something that's usable um in practice and, and procurement is obviously a critical area for us and, and getting it um functioning as a as a, a usable tool is is absolutely vital for procurement so um moving on to the he toms or the higher education toms um the he toms is very much part of the if you like the toms family so the um all the work we do is is designed to be consistent across the board and the the kind of governing vision i suppose for us as a social value portal is that um you can measure social value in the same way anywhere with any kind of organization um at any level um for any sort of size of, of project or activity um uh, and and you can put all of that together and you get a consistent coherent picture so necessarily um the specific frameworks that we develop for individual sectors like higher education have to be able to talk to each other for, for that to happen so the he toms is very much built off our kind of core measurement framework which is the national toms and we spent um about 18 months with um a working group um, from the HE sector, um, from with universities and um, representation from the regional procurement um, consortia as well, um, working through what the right sort of focus and balance um, would be for um, uh, an HE set of higher education TOMS that delivers the um the kind of social value objectives that um, procuring authorities universities in in the he sector have in a way that suppliers could achieve um and as part of that um we had a number of elements that we introduced into the he toms that were different from the national toms and were were there to be tested in practice and would require a bit more development to to fully monetize them for example to allow them to be part of the overall valuation but um important um that you can signpost them in in procurement and, and one thing to to bear in mind with a social value measurement framework in actually in procurement is as as the as the procuring authority you have uh, as long as you follow the the procurement rules you've got complete control about how you embed social value into the process and what weighting you give to that um, social value assessment, but also how you subweight um, the different components and prioritize the different components um, within that. And um, more broadly, what we've seen in the evolution of social, social value in the UK over the last year or two um, with things like the social value model, 
with the NHS now coming on streams and making social value mandatory um, from 1st of April this year is that um, a lot of thinking is going into um, trying to, to kind of work out what what matters most where. Um, you can't boil the ocean, if you like, on, on in social value. You see those broad themes of jobs, growth, social environment and innovation. And um, that need for focus and the need to kind of um, think about um, the, the overlay between what you as a procuring authority feel is important and what your supplier base, depending on the sector, depending on the category, can reasonably expect it to deliver. That sort of overlay is, is, is really important um, to think about ahead of time. And then that gives you something that you and your supplier base can work with in terms of social value delivery. So, as I say, some um, new elements were in there. Um, so um, there were there was some HE specific stuff around uh, staff expert hours and continuous professional development. Um, ISO 20,400 20, um, was was a kind of important marking post um, for the HE Toms. Um, Activities to support cultural events and activities um, really important for, um, for, for for the higher education sector, and then a new thing around single use plastics, which we spent a lot of time talking about. And actually, we took the thinking in the HE Toms around single use plastics, and then incorporated that into a newer version of the National Toms and monetized it, turned it into a proxy value, so that. Um, there is actually a valuation on single use plastics in the national toms now, which could come back into the HE toms if if uh, if that was thought to be a, a good idea. So here's a, here's my latest graphic on where where all of this sits together, but it just sort of shows you that uh, you know you've got the national toms, we've got a new corporate social value framework which is for measuring uh, organisational social value. The, um, Wales has its own national TOMS um, because of the future generations goals um, that, that the government has set um, and a number of things kind of plug into the national TOMS so they're essentially extensions of the national TOMS and the higher education framework is one of those plugins and then on the left hand side you've got the, the UK government's social value model which is a qualitative social value framework for procurement um, but doesn't provide much guidance on how to contract manage the commitments made during procurement. Um, so we've developed a tool to allow the TOMS to be connected into the, the uh, UK government's social value model. Um, and we're on our second iteration of that at the moment. So just a quick word on the on the, the higher education task force, which um, is is no longer active, but um, I think one interesting question would be, is it is it worth reactivating this and looking at the uh, learnings from applying the HE TOMS over the last year or two? Um, but as you can see, there's a very broad range of stakeholders that, that participated in the in the development of the of the HE TOMS. Um, so it was very much a a UK wide um, uh, uh, approach, which was which was great, and uh, we had some really good discussions about the um, the content of the TOMS as a result. Um, what, what what were we trying to do with the HE TOMS? Um, we had very much we had um, uh, there was we were conscious of the kind of national and international components to this. Um, we we were um, aware that um, universities and HE institutions had their own channels and programs already that they were working on to um, to deliver social value. Um, they had their own placemaking strategies, um, and um, uh, so it's, it's very much a kind of a higher education context that drove the uh, that where we ended up on on the on the framework, but. The, the end result was always intended as a, as a kind of starter for 10. So it was very much about sort of putting something out there, seeing how people worked with it, and then and then kind of going from there. So just very quickly, um, because I'm conscious of the need to kind of wrap up and hand over to the next speaker, um, we, um, we, we, we've been working on how to evolve the, the overall TOM system. So we're launching something called the Social Value Academy, 
um, which is a, a training and education uh, CPD program for social value that will function at a number of different levels. So it'll start with a foundational level and then progressively become more, more expert. Uh, so that's out there now. And there's a lot of additional content and all of this content is about helping to simplify the use of the TOMS framework and um, provide supporting guidance and, and so on. And um, one interesting thing would be to look at how that might feed back into, into the work we did with the HE sector. Um, so on updates for the National TOMS, very much about keeping it simple, tackling climate change and improving the quality of reporting. Those were our key focuses for a a National TOMS 2022 update. And as I say, lots of additional supporting content to, to go with that. Um, here's a graphic, it's the TOMS do's and don'ts video. This is aimed at, the, at suppliers, very much um, a, a kind of easy watch um, in, in three minute chunks for the 10 major considerations about how you use the TOMS um, and the things to, to kind of look out for like, you know, double counting and um, making sure that you're you're putting forward targets as a supplier that that you know you can deliver, and that are your targets and not somebody else's. Those kinds of things that that help to just kind of um, cement the the thinking around how to apply the TOMS as a as a supplier. Um, some cards, some playing cards, which um, is my favourite bit of this year actually, to produce a deck of playing cards with the TOMS on them, um, just as a quick reference guide and a greenhouse gas savings calculator, which allows people to um, set their own baselines um, to, to, to kind of um, work out what the difference is, which is the kind of additionality, the bit that you, if you're talking about carbon savings, the bit that you capture in the TOMS is, is way, where you actually um, uh, improve um, on, on, the, on the emissions. So you need to capture that sort of difference between your baseline and what you're, what you're actually doing. Um, so as a, a spreadsheet calculator that's, that we've developed to help people do that. Um, and we have a support site and knowledge hub where, where resources and articles can, can be found. Um, so um, I'll, I'll finish up there um, just with a kind of um, uh, a request to um, get in touch. Um, be great to hear from you. Be great to kind of hear, hear how we might sort of take the, uh, take the TOMS forward. Um, in the HE sector. So uh, I'll stop my screen share there and hand back to Marisol. Uh, thanks, Nathan. Um, so we're going to go with uh, Bindi and then after we go for, for the Q&A. So if everyone has any questions, just use the Q&A function, please. Um, so I'm going to share your own Bindi. Thank you, Marisol. Morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Um, Marisol, I'm not as techy as Nathan, so Marisol's going to run my slides for me. I can only cope with one thing at a time. Uh, today, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about social value in practice. Um, for those who don't know me, I am Bindi Sandhu. I am the Deputy Director at LUPC, uh, but I have been the head of procurement in two organisations and I want to talk to you about the experience I had at my last organisation which is University of Arts London. Marisol could I have the next slide please? So really what I wanted to talk to you about the practical application uh, of the social value um, and how we put it in practice at UAL, for example, and built it into the contracts, the tender process uh, and contract management. So first of all, we, we used the two processes, actually. We looked at the TOMS and we made a selection on the most appropriate uh, of what we wanted to achieve and what we wanted to score against. And really that's taking into account our corporate strategy and what we wanted to achieve as an organisation, uh, and also taking into account the regulatory environment. What do we want to do? Who do we need to comply with? And which rules we need to comply with? Uh, and the way I see social value, social value, I've got to say, is one of my absolute loves. I just think it's so important. And I think we can be, we're 
we have the fortunate opportunity to be drivers for change and building social value into our Haiti contracts is a step that we can take that makes an that makes a difference for not only our own organizations but also the people who work for us who are our students and then communities that benefit um, outside of that collaboration i see is really key collaborating with your suppliers and really finding out what they can do um, and building that into a core part of the deliverables so as i said we selected items from the toms but then we also looked at different things that were in our corporate strategy so things like london living wage but also making sure that that london living wage is being delivered through the supply chain itself uh, which is quite a task uh, because you've got to ensure that actually the suppliers all the different tier suppliers are signing up to the same agreement also living hours was one of them that we delivered through uh, it was an fm contract actually that we built these into living hours means that you look after your workforce there they can have sick pay you don't have zero hours contracts you can also you need to issue your staff with your their month of hours that are required so you can't be calling somebody up on the day uh, and really helping families to plan as well so that was built in but in addition we also asked the suppliers aside from the toms aside from the london living wage and living hours what else do you currently do um, and what is in your forecast to deliver over the next years of the contract if we were to take you on board then it's when we did award the contract we built it into the contract management as kpis and reporting and the initial engagement mobilization meetings we started with the supplier we had a meeting with we had two suppliers that we'd awarded the contract to met with both of them and we asked them to deliver a social value um, program report on it let us know what the progress is let us about know about new initiatives and present to the university wide and stakeholders who were interested so it, and that can that's beyond just the estates team for example for for fm because then you start answering to your wider environment and i think certainly with fm uh, it's quite key because there's always been a lot of concern about cleaning contracts uh, and low paid workers etc so actually as an organization you're showing how you're making that difference um, and then building it into the procurement processes so that it doesn't just happen at a tender process it's an ongoing process that's reviewed annually and it's recorded to see what the progress is uh, and then also sharing that information sharing that knowledge with your your wider audience so that that's putting it in practice that's what we did at UAL Marisol could I have the next slide please so the bit I wanted to talk to you about now is the social value in frameworks and how we want to build it in um, obviously social value uh, sorry the frameworks are public sector so we've got to fit in with the new regulations and social value is one of the key aspects but I think <clears throat> as as I said earlier, I think it goes beyond just the regulatory. I think it also gives us some uh, opportunity to drive change uh, and benefit communities. Office for Students, those regulations, again, complying with those and showing that, you know, uh, as framework providers, we're responsible. Um, and it, we're also supporting our universities in the contracts that they take up. So our strategic objectives, what are they going to be? What are our university strategic, um, sorry, strategic objectives likely to be? How can we start building some of those things into the frameworks that we provide? And how do we build social value into our procurement? So, and one of the things that we're thinking of is that actually you ask the supply base. So for the next agreement that we go out to tender with, we're going to be asking them 
what social value do you deliver? I want us to have the opportunity to, once those suppliers come back with their responses, we provide a report to our universities and say, look, supplier A, B and C, this is what they do. You might find that you're going to pick supplier A because they're, they're really, especially if you can do direct award, it's not just going to be as simple as you pick who you like, but actually that could be one of the criteria that you select against. And especially if they're the supplier strategic objectives really fit in with yours. And I think reporting on those, it gives you the benefit to then go back to your organizations as well and say, actually, we're not just adding value on the bottom line or through our procurements, we're also adding different benefits. Could I have the next slide, please, Marisol? I wanted to show you some examples. <clears throat> so this is some work that um, Marisol has been doing recently. She's going to talk to you about the modern slavery tool, but actually we've also been out to these suppliers on our estates framework. And we asked them to give us three of their tangible benefits that they are delivering to. And that ultimately, if as universities you contract with them, you are also supporting this activity. And so I, I think it's a win-win. Um, and you can see there, I won't go through all of them, but there's a real range of what people are already, activity that we're already undertaking. And I do believe that this kind of information in your reports showing, going back to your seniors, your organisations saying, look, this is what our suppliers are doing. So Churchill, for example, they support charities that alleviate hunger, provide support and education to help people get out of food po po poverty. Sorry. And they're working with the Trussell Trust. Uh, obviously, things like EAP, you've got employment with um, city security. Their oldest employee is 68 and they're trying to recruit, recruit locally. There's diversity in there, as you can see, across the board. And Enviro, they have an ethos that if they look after their people, they believe that their people will look after their clients. And you've also got the carbon emission um, benefits from G4S, for example. So there's different things across the board. This is one of them. Can we have a look at the next one, please, Marisol? So again, this is uh, their, we asked for three, and this is the second one that they provided us. So this is their wording on, on what they're doing. So BTU, they want to stimulate growth in local econ economies by purchasing 80% of parts and components locally. So not only are you benefiting that local community, you're also looking at your climate improvements that you're making and your contribution towards that. Um, the Women's Age Charities, and they were doing a fundraising, different fundraising for 21. As I said, it's all contributing to everything that people are doing. Um, the apprenticeships for Churchill, uh, you've got the employee support. Um, and that's, I, I say, probably the that's something that's really beneficial, especially in the current crisis that communities and families, staff uh, are encountering at the moment. Um, and Enviro, for example, they're doing two types of apprenticeships. So they've got one where they, they have their own academy and then they also support uh, apprentices through Chichester College and University of East London. And that's followed through with a, a paid summer internship program. So I think these, these kind of benefits are, are excellent. Could I have the next slide, please? So this is our third one. Um, so as you can see, again, a broad range of things that people are doing. Uh, the one that I really like, which is fairly straightforward, but it, I, I think it's an innovation. And that's going back to Nathan's point on the fact um, that innovation is part of social value. BTU, for example, they repurposed a boiler, a university boiler for a university client, but actually they asked that client to 
give a donation for students and that went into the greatest needs fund so it supported students mental health well-being bursary scholarships and I think that's excellent um, and it's thinking outside the box and if you uh, collaborate closely with your suppliers I think there's opportunities to be had that you can really develop and grow um, so, and you, city security for example they they offset their printing by uh, planting trees so they're doing something physical g4s have got something i think which is is really good I'm, i've not heard of them before but they increase supply chain diversity through a relationship with kalida which is a b2b marketplace linking buyers with more diverse suppliers and then they also worked with the minority supplier development uk um, churchill again they've contributed their apprentice levy through 3,600 of their small suppliers. Um, and Enviro, again, working with charities uh, for vulnerable people, the Rainbow Centre. And it, it's making a significant difference to people's lives. Could I have the next slide, please? The other thing I wanted to talk to you about, and this is one particular project for one of our members and this is the social profit calculator and it works out and it this is the calculation has been defined by the government um, so it's an official one and it calculates the social economic and environmental impact and value based on the social return on investment and the economic impact so here you can see that uh, this particular project, which was a lecture theatre and the spend was 942,160, it resulted in a total social profit of 1.9 million. Now, and I think that's things like this, again, with your reporting back to your organisations, it's, it's really good to understand what contribution you are having. I know this is easier to report in construction for something like this. Um, but it's so here you can see the labor force forecast this is the actual physical impact of that contract the new employees the apprenticeships work placements um, and safeguard the safeguarding of jobs could I have the next slide please and this is the breakdown of the social uh, return on investment it's uh, based on the fiscal, economic, social, SROI, a total, and then the ratio that's used. And as you can see that these are the different aspects that it, it combines. And then you've also got the local economic impact. So that's what, what's being spent locally um, and the benefits that it's bringing into communities. I, I, I think this is quite a nice way of going back to your organisations and adding to what what you're delivering. Can I have the next slide, please? Thank you. So questions and answers, that's it from me. Uh, I just wanted to give you an idea of how I have applied it within the workplace and we've applied it to different contracts and used it as a contract management tool. Uh, and we also want to build it into frameworks. Thank you. Thanks, Bindi. Thank you. Thanks, Bindi and Nathan. Um, Rob, any any comments? Anyone, any questions? When I was doing that, I couldn't see the Q&A. So. Okay. Um, well, thanks, Bindi. Thanks, Nathan. Really interesting um, presentations. I think from, from my perspective, having just participated in, well, a couple of evaluations, but uh, one of the for, for frameworks that we've uh, we are uh, SUPC are currently evaluating and I had a look at the um, social value questions and trying to score those. I think my, my question, I know I'm a panelist, but posing questions to start the discussion really is as Bindi's um, uh, presentation showed, there are so many aspects to social value. Um, but in a way, the score that we can apply to social values to some de degree constrained because we've got so many other aspects that we have to evaluate. 
Um, it sort of, I suppose my, my question really is, how do you balance out the fact that obviously all of these things are hugely important, but actually how can you make sure that if you like, you're not trying to fragment the value that you are applying to social value by trying to encourage such a, a breadth across the various toms. But if you've only got a few percent that, that, that the weights, uh, the evaluation weighting has, has been determined for a particular project, how do you prioritize? Do you, uh, how do you use that? If we say it's 10%, how do you get best value from that 10% of the evaluation weight? Um, are, have you got any tips so that people can get in, can get most bang from that 10% book, so to speak, if that makes sense? I'm going to start. Nathan, you're welcome to come in afterwards. Uh, for, for me, what I've done is look at the corporate objectives what does the organization want to achieve what's the highest priority uh, and i've also asked for social value reporting sorry not reporting but information and that's for information purpose only so you can separate the two so you can have the toms which go towards your weighting and that that fits in with your corporate strategy then you can have an aside of the uh, social value activity like I see them as two separate things because the second side you can have just as information purposes. You don't have to put it in the scoring, but actually you might find that some suppliers do more than others. And then you can you can still use that information and you can still work with that organization to perhaps develop their offering. Uh, but that can be outside of that scoring. So I think you can separate the two. Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, I, re I really like what Bindi was talking about earlier on in terms of supplier engagement and um, asking them ahead of time what, what they do. Um, and, and that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to follow all of that and say that's OK, that's going to be what we ask for, because actually what you're trying to do is move them on. But it gives you a really solid base. And as you say, if, if you if you think about what you're trying to deliver as a um, uh, what, what's important to you as a procuring organisation from a social value perspective, you effectively get a kind of Venn diagram, which is the kind of sweet spot, if you like, where um, you're, you've got some alignment. The other thing I would I would just add is that um, category of spend will significantly affect the kind of social value delivery that you can you can deliver. So, Bindi talked about the FM sector. Um, and um, there's some really interesting stuff in there that, that, that she highlighted. Um, other things will not lend themselves to, for example, spending with SMEs. I mean, if you're procuring consultancy, it's a completely different ball game. But there's plenty that can be done with there. So there's some thinking to do about actually what do we think this particular category of spend can generate from, from the perspective of social value. Um, the other thing that I think is probably just worth keeping in mind is um, making sure that what you're getting from bidders is genuinely kind of value added. Um, so the, the, one of the really tricky bits in when you're evaluating this stuff um, is is, on, is just sifting out between what's kind of corporate policy from their perspective and what they're doing anyway, from what they're actually proposing um, to deliver in terms of social value for this for this contract. And, we could spend a whole seminar talking about the different um, uh, aspects of that and um, you know there are challenges and opportunities within all of that as well but you do need to be well cited on on the fact that you know some of what what companies will tell you um, will be quite naturally sort of drawing on 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 you know things that are happening already within that organization and other things will be specific to this contract you need to work out how to assess those different things um, thanks. I think we have some questions uh, in the chat. So, um, is there any HG Thomas spreadsheet available, and is there any guidance for suppliers too? I think that's for me. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the HG Thomas is available from our website. Um, it's downloadable. Um, you you need to register, but when when um, you do, you should be able to have it free to download. 
it's probably sitting somewhere within the the working group that we pulled together for the HE Toms as well. But I, to be honest, I don't know where it is because that, the people involved in that group, I think, have kind of mostly moved on to to other things. There's maybe a it's kind of partly my question earlier on about do we want to um, bring that together again? So, um, but you should be able to get it from our website. Sorry, what's the second half of the question? A guidance for suppliers. If there's any guidance for suppliers. Yes. Um, so uh, we we produced the guidance document for the HE Toms, but but actually most of the guidance that's um, provided around the national Toms is also relevant. It's just that the the measure set um, for the HE Toms is slightly different, but the principles are the same. Um, and again, there are there's there's a kind of variety of resources available um, for um, for users, including suppliers. Yeah. Um, there's a question here in relation to the greenhouse uh, calculator. <clears throat> is this for scope one and two, or does it include supply chains in scope three? And if it does it include supply chain emissions, is the calculator oh, um, is the calculator be based on a spend? Oh, um, so it, um, if I recall, it includes. Um, it gives you the option to report either just scope one and two or scope one, two and three. Um, and um, is the calculator based on spend? The Yes, it, so it, it is. Um, essentially, the way it works is it looks at um, kind of industry benchmarks for um, uh, expected carbon emissions. So if you've got a um, you've got a project that, that you know, has a mix of um, different components to it. Um, it will use um, uh, carbon emissions based on on those different sector categories to to produce a, a kind of baseline. It's it's very much intended as a as a fallback. Um, you know, many organisations will have a much more sophisticated way of doing it, but it was it was particularly aimed at, for example, SMEs or you know um, organisations that don't have the resources or haven't got to doing their own sort of baseline assessment um, as, a, as but yeah um, we're, we're, we kind of put it out there last um, last May June time and we're, we're keen to get feedback um, and there's probably um, you know ways in which we can improve it as well. Thanks. Uh, we have a few ones out um, and we're running out of time so maybe we can go with this one. Uh, I think this is for Bindi. Did you score the social value tenders were already delivering backwards looking as part of the award criteria, forward looking. Um, we scored s partially for the what they're doing now, the backward looking, um, and how they were going to contribute to uh, the contract itself. But then some of those were information only, so we didn't score that. But what we did, that was the basis of the conversation for developing and collaborating on what was going to be delivered as the forward project as well. So we we almost had two streams that we, one that we scored against and that was delivered as part of the contract. But then in addition, we had the forward looking element, which was for information only. Uh, and that was joint uh, progress really. Rob, can you can you see the questions as well? Uh, yeah, uh, I can. Um, so, uh, just picking up one um, from Colin, um, the suppliers' responses are very varied, and how you view them is very subjective. Did you find the SROI tool helpful in scoring them? Uh, actually, didn't use the SROI tool at all. Um, it was really, you're right, the, the responses can be so varied, but I think we we had our specialists scoring those um, responses. So the sustainability, head of sustainability, for example, um, and other key people in the team to really understand sifting through 
what the suppliers are telling us and and then applying a score based on the quality of the actual delivery uh, and and as you said you have to be careful because it's it's surrounded with a lot of information sometimes uh, so, and it can be too much information um, but i think really sifting through and getting the specialist to understand and evaluate and follow up with questions as well not just perhaps take them on on their word um, but if it's not clear going back to them uh, and the SROI it's really it's a separate report that actually um, is backward looking so it's not at the time of tender so I don't know if it could be used as a scoring mechanism at all I didn't use it like that it for me it was a reporting tool thanks Wendy thank you I think we have to leave there. We have the next webinar in 10 minutes. So thank you, Bindi. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna make the slides available as well for participants. So <clears throat> uh, if there is any links that you can include, maybe Nathan or Bindi, then that would be great.